Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a 2D clicker style game in Unity and welcome to episode 6. So this time we're going to work more with the timer scripts and further options to auto create as well. So the idea of what we're going to do is we're going to have this button actually allow us to, rather than click it, wait until we have enough cash to actually buy something and then it will display for us to buy, let's say, a baker. Because we're baking cookies, so a baker would make sense. So we're going to start by actually doing a little sneaky work, we could say. And the button itself, um, I'm not sure where to position it, to be honest. So let's just have it uh, over this way a little. And let's make it a little bit bigger and a little bit more fancier, at least. So let's change the normal color to maybe a greenish kind of color. Uh, maybe a dark green and let's have the text uh, white on it let's also make it larger so font size let's say 30 and let's also rename it to by baker actually in hindsight let's change the font to about 24. now what we're going to do is we're going to cheat here because Although that button is a button and we can click it and it's got everything attached to it, I'm actually going to hold control, press D to duplicate that button. I'm going to F2. I'm going to rename it to fake baker button and rename the original button to just baker button. Now, this is where the clever bit comes in. So this fake baker button, what we need to do is untick interactable. So it disables it and also turn off baker button up here. So now all we have on scene is what appears to be a button to allow us to buy a baker. However, we don't have enough. So to get this working just right, we're going to have to create a script which will allow us to monitor our amount of money. So let's right click, create C sharp script, and we'll call this global baker so in here we need to create several variables the first two being the fake button we've just created and the real button that we already had exist so i'm going to get rid of any annotations for now and let's go public game object let's call it fake button and then public game object real button semicolon so you can see what's kind of going on here we're also going to use this to modify the text on the actual button itself because again we're going to kind of future proof a little here and in doing so we're going to need to add into the namespace using unity engine dot ui semicolon and at the same time, we're going to need to change or rather add in an extra object. So we're going to need public game object fake text semicolon. And same applies again public game object and real text semicolon. Next thing we're going to want to do is have a variable for an integer. So public int and we'll have uh, in fact what do we call it in our global cache it's called cache count isn't it so let's rename this and just have this as um, current cache semicolon and in good measure for that we'll put current cache equals global cache dot cache count semicolon so when this script runs it's just making sure that uh, the current cache for this internal script is referencing the real cache amount so the button itself to start off with i think we will have it say uh, by baker dash uh, 50 dollars and same with the fake baker button we'll have that say by baker dash $50. So that means in our void update, 
if current cash is equal or greater than 50, then do the following. Uh, apologies, greater than or equal to 50. If it is, then we turn the fake button off. Fake button dot set active false. And then we also turn the real button on. So real button dot set active true semicolon. So it really is as simple as that to kind of monitor what is going on. And the reason we have this here is because we may be able to change the text within this script. We may change it from a different script. It kind of depends where we're going with this. But we always need to kind of make sure things are in place just in case. Uh, save that script and we'll add it to, oops, if we click here. So let's add this to our mechanics object. So global baker, add to mechanics. Let's add those objects in. So baker button is real button, and the text within that is real text. Fake baker button, and text for the fake text. So that's all set, ready to go. Now, to show how this actually works, if we press play, and yep, it's not working. However, if we make um, 50 cookies, I probably should have had this as maybe 20 rather than uh, 50, but the idea is every frame it's monitoring just how much money we have so that means when we get to 50 it will set that button active and we can buy a baker perfect so what we need to do now is modify the script which is attached to this object which is right there in button object and it is if i can find it um is it purchase log is that the one I always forget which one it is. So purchase log, auto start cookie, that's it. So purchase log, auto start cookie. And now what we have to do here is a couple of different little things. Now, if we go back to global baker, let's set public static int, and we'll call this baker value semicolon and save now what this means is that the baker value is going to be updated within here so once we buy our baker we need to change that and what i'm going to do is to kind of keep it relative to the game itself i'm going to multiply the value by two each time by default it is going to be equal to 50 because 50 is just where i'm going to start with this so that means that in a purchase log once we've bought our cookie, we'll do global baker dot baker value equals uh, multiplied equals two semicolon. So that will multiply it by two. At the same time, we also need to deduct from our global cash the amount we've just paid for that baker. <clears throat> so that means we need to change this cash count value. So global cash dot cash count minus equals global baker dot baker value semicolon. And we should probably put this line of code after we've deducted our amount. Otherwise we may end up uh, buying again and again and again and it just costs too much like it would cost double what we've just paid so let's save that script head back to global baker and in void update that means we'll have to monitor what the text says on each object so public uh, sorry i'm not sure why i'm declaring it again there it's actually fake text dot get component text oh close bracket dot text equals and it is by baker dash dollar sign and then quote and then plus baker value 
semicolon. And then we do the same again for the real text. So real text dot get component. And in spiky brackets again, text, open close bracket dot text equals by Baker dash and then plus Baker value semicolon and save. Now, we could theoretically, if we don't want to save a bit of time scripting, we could change if current cache is greater than or equal to Baker value rather than 50. Because we've already set it to 50 up here and we need to change it constantly as we go through the game. So if we press Control S and save, head back to Unity, script is thinking and it's done and press play, everything should be in order. So that means that when we've bought, uh, or rather made, uh, the 50 cookies and we've sold our 50 cookies, then that will mean that we can buy our baker. And we should see this in action now, once we get there. So this will change to 100. Perfect. Now, yep, you can see that's all good and well. It's going a bit crazy there. However, we need to now modify that. So once we set our, um, our value uh, lower, I should say, then we need to actually turn off those buttons and set the fake button as active again. So let's get this in order. So when we come across here to say current cache is all good and well. So after we have set uh, or rather we've bought something, what we can do is set a variable to turn off within the global baker. So to do that, we'll go public static bool and we'll call it turn off button semicolon in fact we'll make that equal to false semicolon so within void update what we'll need to do is if turn oops turn off button equals true semicolon uh, not semicolon open curly bracket sorry uh, we need to turn the real button off real button dot set active false semicolon and fake button dot set active true semicolon and at that point it should be pretty obvious what we need to do i'm just going to get rid of void start there don't think we need it uh, save that script and then on purchase log, yeah, you've guessed it now, global baker dot, uh, what do we call it, turn off button equals true, semicolon and save. And then one thing uh, we should add after we turn them buttons off, we need to put turn off button equals false semicolon and save so to save a bit of time now in testing i'm going to change this baker value to 10 just so as i only have to make um 10 cookies before i can actually buy a baker you can see it's automatically updated anyway so if i make 10 cookies sell 10 buy a baker you can see the button has now turned itself off and theoretically you can go on like this you can sell the cookies, and once we get to 20, we can rebuy. So that is how we can set this up so as we can buy uh, bakers to increase. Now, what we need to do eventually is further develop this purchase log to allow the auto create to increase its value in um, the increases in cookies. And that's something we'll get into because next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to have a little panel. Uh, with some stats on that says so many bakers cooking so many per second and we'll work more on this levels of the auto maker uh, we may also look at some sound effects as well so guys until that next episode thank you very much for watching